You want to know what's going on with the Colorado housing market? Here you go. So this is the newest report from the Colorado Association of Realtors. It's titled, Homes Stay on Market Longer, Prices Flatten as Buyers and Sellers Wait Out Rate Hikes. And so you can open up the the whole report is on here. Uh, I'm going to go over some of the highlights here. But uh, home buyers and sellers continue to feel the effects of the Federal Reserve's interest rate hikes designed to help curb inflation and slow the market. And this is true. We have seen that buyers have pulled back. Uh, as a result of higher interest rates, but as well as uh, very high home prices. Further on, it says housing prices across the seven-county Denver metro area and state continued to fall slightly as buyers struggle to justify their higher monthly payments and weakened buying power, while sellers locked into lower interest rates don't see the value of a move just yet. And I would agree with that. Uh, if you bought when your interest rate was low at two and a half to three and a half ish percent, there is not much incentive for you to move. And especially if you're going to have to buy something with a potentially much higher interest rate. Further down, it reads, although the combination of factors has led to some nice bumps in active inventory and month's supply of inventory, overall inventory remains extremely low across a majority of price points. The supply and demand equation is helping keep prices from falling significantly, keeping many buyers on the sidelines, while others are getting a little more time to consider a purchase, make offers, and complete inspections. So if we look at the report itself for the state of Colorado, they've got some lovely colorful graphs we'll take a look at. Again, this is for uh, January 2023, so this is the most recent uh, state uh, data that we have for the real estate market in Colorado. So the amount of new listings as of January 2023, we had 4,698 new listings for the whole state. And that is a 17.8% drop year over year uh, from last year to this year. Uh, pending under contract was similar. Uh, we had 5,284 total pending slash under contract properties in the state, and that is a 10.2% drop from last year. Sold listings uh, were even less. We had 3,441 for the month of January, and that is a 29.4% drop from last year. Uh, you'll see that the median sales price has actually not changed. It has been, I mean, it, it has, uh, it has uh, fluctuated year uh, from last year to this year, certainly. But overall, it has actually stayed the same from last year to this year at $520,000 for the median sales price. The average sales price has increased about twenty grand. It's up to $665,645, a 3.1% gain from last year. Interesting. Uh, if you remember last year, people were getting uh, over asking and multiple offers in the past couple of years here in Colorado Springs anyway. And for the state last year, uh, it was 101%. Uh, I was the percent of the uh, list price, meaning how much more or less they got than what they listed their property for. So 101% last year. Uh, this January, we're at 97.8%. So that's a 3.2% drop uh, from last year. So homes on average are getting a little bit less than what they list their homes for. And you'll see the days on market, meaning how long it takes until the property uh, takes an offer and goes under contract, uh, is at 62 days right now. And last year it was at 35 days. So the days on market has doubled for how long it takes property to sell here. And the total inventory of active listings, we have 9,814 active listings for the state. And that is a 68.3% gain uh, from last year. So quite a few more properties for sale. And the month supply of inventory has also doubled uh, from last year. Last year we were at uh, 0.7 months, and now we are at one and a half months. So that's a uh, you know a double the gain. Uh, however, four to six months is what 
uh, we would consider a normal or a balanced market between buyers and sellers. So to have less than four to six months worth of inventory means that selling homes is far more in the seller's favor because there are fewer homes for sale and there are more buyers than there are homes for sale. So we were looking at single family homes in particular. So looking at condos and townhomes, the percentages are similar. Uh, there has been a 19.8% drop in new listings uh, from last year to this year. Uh, pending under contract, there was a 20.1% drop. Uh, sold listings, there was a 38.6% drop. So uh, even fewer uh, sales than actual new listings. So the new listings you'll see for January, there were 4,698 new listings. And that's a 17.8% drop uh, year over year. <laughs> Hello. Um, we have a 50.7% a, a increase in new listings year over year. So we're, we're you know, double what we had uh, available for December. And it's still relatively low uh, uh, inventory. It's just, it's, it's not a lot. Uh, it's better than it was, but it's still fairly low. And if you look at the numbers here, because we're going all the way back to February 2022, um, and if you look at the chart uh, underneath that too, you can see it as a visual. Uh, the green is single family homes and the blue is townhouses and condos. Um, but you'll see a, a seasonal trend um, where the green line comes down every year. That's January um, or about there. And then where it comes back up is summertime, June, July. Historically, uh, in the wintertime, you get down to about four or 5,000 uh, new listings for sale throughout the state. And this December, you actually came down to just over 3,000 uh, new single family listings throughout the state. So it's kind of broken a record uh, for how few uh, listings that we've had, how little inventory that we've had. The median sales price um, is at January is at $520,000. And that is a slight drop from last month uh, in December, where it was at five hundred thirty thousand dollars, but year over year, it's actually on par. It's at the same. You know, last January, January twenty twenty two, the median sales price was also at five hundred twenty thousand. It's it's up from uh, before then, January of twenty twenty one. It was only at four hundred forty five thousand. And townhouses and condos, you'll see uh, same thing, where the median sales price has just been even with last year. There was some growth throughout the year, but it came back down. This chart is just very fun to look at. See the values uh, just slowly trending up all the way from you know 2012, 2013, going on up to you know 2019, 2020, uh, and then starting. You know, somewhere in 20, mid 2020, uh, into starting into 2021, is where the home values uh, take an even sharper climb up, as you can see. And then about April of 2022 is when those values start to come back down. And here we are today. Average sales price um, is very similar in what's going on, uh, it, and it's a little bit different here, um, a little bit higher. The, in January, the average sales price statewide was $665,645, and it's a 3.1% gain year, year over year, uh, and that's a 2.3% gain month over month. So uh, values, as you can see here, are just way all over the place as, uh, you know, since 2020, uh, things really, uh, they, they've they gone up overall, but as of the past few months, things have uh, been very up and down. But generally, uh, the the average sales price values have also been coming down steadily since April of 2022. This one is the percent of list price 
that was received. So what they listed it for versus what they got for it. And as of January 2023, uh, you're at 97.8%. So you list it for, you know, whatever amount of dollars and you get 97.8% of what you listed it for on average. You know, again, some people are still getting multiple offers. Uh, and if they're listing it properly, they are. Um, and then, you know, some people are taking way longer than 60 days to sell. So it really does depend. But on the average, uh, people are getting just a little bit less than what they listed it for. Um, and that is a 3.2% drop from last year. Because last year, people were getting 101% of what they asked for. They were getting 1% more than what they asked for this time last year. And in January of 2021, they were getting... 0.3%, a third of a percent over what they asked for on average. Yeah. And to come back uh, to days on market, uh, we're at 62 days on market on average, and that is a 77.1% gain from last year. Last year, we it was at 35 days on market on average. year before that, it was at 43 days. So it has shot up this year from last year. This one is the inventory of active listings. So as of January, 9,814 active listings for the whole state. And that's a 68.3% gain from last year. Last year, there were 5,830 active listings. And January of 2021, 7,260 total active listings. So we have started to come down, and I mean, that's seasonal too. We'll look at the uh, graph below, and you can see, again, the green line is single-family homes, and the condos and townhouses are in blue. So you can see the amount of inventory. I mean, back in 2010, 2012, you had quite a bit, and it has steadily decreased, you know, until about 2017, 2018, it levels out to a low level of inventory and then you come down to 2021 and and it's just there is very very little for sale at that point if you remember that uh, that market that we had and since you know beginning ish of 2022 that inventory has started to come back up but overall our what is available for sale is nowhere near what was available for sale, you know, 10 years ago, five years ago. Uh, you can see the uh, townhouses and condos, the amount of inventory uh, hasn't, it, it, it did dip a bit along uh, in the early 2010s, but it, and, and it, well, it did take a, a beating in 2021, 2022, there was less available for sale, but the amount of available inventory for time, townhomes and condos seems to be less impacted by the economy, interestingly. And this one is the month's supply of inventory. So how many homes are available versus how long it would take the market to sell them all. So if you're looking at it like that, in January 2023, uh, it's one and a half months supply of inventory, meaning that if no new properties came out on the market ever again, how long would it take the existing inventory to go through and sell? It would take one and a half months now, and that is a 114.3% gain from last year. Last year, it was 0 0.7 months worth of inventory. It was very low. The year before that, January 2021, it was 0 0.9 months worth of inventory. And we had a bump up to almost two and a, you know, about two and a half months worth of inventory uh, back in summer of 2022. But overall, uh, as you can see uh, at the chart in the bottom, that inventory has been relatively low since 2013, 2014. Uh, it was you know quite high back in 2010, 2011, but it has steadily came down and it 
went way low in 2021, 2022, and it's just now started to come back up. So we'll see what this means for the future. Um, I can't make any predictions or decisions about what's going to happen for the rest of 2023 20, based on this, but I find this data fascinating, and I hope you do too. I hope you found this information helpful. If you did, please click the like button and the subscribe, and hit the bell for more information like this, and I'll see you in the next one.